It's uh, like a moose. What is he, like a deer or something? Uh, in the, probably in the family of, okay. of hooved, mm-hmm. you know, forest dwellers. Yeah. But um, yeah, real big, great swimmers. And they can climb trees. Very Canadian. Yeah. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. Ah! I am Spencer Cardia. For a bit. I am Spencer Cardia. I am Thidwick. Thidwick? And this here is Frank, who's wearing a nice little black puffy jacket. Yeah. Like he's from New York. Half puffy. Is it? Is it considered puffy if it's only the vest area? I don't know. I, I Puffer, don't... I think they call it. Not puffy. A puffy. Puffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> yeah. No, it's um Puffer Daddy. Puffer Daddy? Puff Daddy. Puff Daddy. Also known as P. Diddy. Also known as... What's his real name? He has like a nerdy name, doesn't he? No. Sean Combs, I think. Yeah, Sean. <laughs> Sean. Sorry if your name's Sean. How's it going, guys? You feeling good? It's Friday. That's got to be exciting. Yes. Yeah. It's the weekend. Well, we just got through a tough week of grinding. <laughs> yep. And working in the coal mines. Well, yeah, we... um. We work in we would we would work in a sawmill if we were grinding. It's more than a coal mine where maybe that would be. Maybe you're grinding your teeth. In we the coal were mine. picking if we were in a coal mine. Picking with our, with our pickaxe. Is it called picking? I don't know. I'm picking coal. Um, there used to be pickers. I used to work in a in a warehouse. Um, and and one of the jobs was pickers, but that wasn't with with pickaxes. It was so it was pick up. <laughs> it was yeah loading. Um, it, when you order something, and then. And the order comes to your house, all the parts, all the things you ordered obviously are in different parts of the warehouse. So you got to go and, and... He wanted a hammer and he wanted a pair of shoes. And so you, you're the picker? Yeah. There was loaders and pickers. So loaders loaded the bins. Okay. And um, we replenished those hammers and stuff that the pickers had taken. Pickers, um, what do you think would be the easier job? Pickers or loaders? Mm-hmm. Today? In today's day and age? Pickers. Back in the day, loaders. I'm, I imagine it's so streamlined and technologically advanced mm. that picking is, is, is as right. easy as exact coordinates. I feel like back in the day, it's like you'd have to know, like how if you ask someone in the supermarket, right. where are the baked beans? Right. That's exactly what hap- we, we would we would have the person's order. This yeah. was Sears. Okay. Sears, um, the the demolished, the, the imploded Sears warehouse um, on Roosevelt Boulevard. And um, so we would get their order. What they had gotten out of the Sears catalog, mm-hmm. and then we would have to go, like you know, like in the library, you're looking for the numbers and stuff, the bins, yeah. what bin to go to. But you're right, today would be completely automated. Completely automated. Yeah. And so, back in the day, I feel like the loading is easy job today. I imagine it's the only job that's, it's, it's, you can't really get rid of labor intensive work. I think you can. Well, you can, but I'm saying I probably like, there might it might be automatically loaded. Well, like in the mm-hmm. now, because mm-hmm. even Dump. like UPS, I know there's like the morning loaders that. I know some people who do that, and they load the trucks in the morning. Oh, really? Because you need to load it. Like, you can't get a robot into a truck. But they will. Oh, there'll be there's self driving cars. There is trucks, and you know, so and forth. there will be self loading loaders and self loathing. Well, yes, yeah, so people that's, always. That's, <laughs> that's both the pickers and the loaders. But guys, yeah, it's a good day. It's February eighteenth, flying through the week. Um, what special days is it today? I'll tell you. It's National Battery Day. What would we do without batteries? Well, you wouldn't have your self-driving car. Do you know how batteries work? Yes. You do? Yeah. Enlighten us. There's little, um, mice inside there. Yeah, no, it's a bunny. The bunny, yeah. Oh, yeah. Silly me. The Energizer Bunny. Um, batteries, it's, it's just magnets and, um, metals. And when they react, they create energies that are contained within the vessel. Maybe. I thought it was acid. I, I made all of it up. I thought it was like a liquid, like an electrified liquid. Oh, yeah, because they always say battery take, acid. take the batteries out of old electronics because they leak. Yeah. You can't drink battery acid. Learn that the hard way. My dad used to work in a battery factory. No, he did the, not. Yes, he did. Do you not even know my dad? No. He left his home at 14 okay. in an island called Trinidad, mm-hmm. and his first job was working in a battery factory. Really? Yeah. Very dangerous. Probably child labor. Yeah. But different time, different country, they say. 
any um, close calls that he had? I don't know. No. He probably stayed energized. Yeah. I, that's how I know not to drink battery acid. I haven't seen him in years. The battery acid's uh, scaring me. Okay. Well, it's also National Drink Wine Day. That's, that's why you're not supposed to throw batter- car batteries away, right? Like you're supposed to return it to the yeah. store. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They give you a little discount. So don't drink the battery acid. Drink the wine. Drink the wine. It's national. Yeah. So if you have to drink something today, make sure it's the wine and not the battery acid. But wine's pretty religious. Very religious. It's as religious as it gets. Yeah. <sighs> I wonder if that, like, I wonder if if uh, if if that made for alcoholics and Christian and Christendom being like it's religious. Oh, like it has a blessing. It's on religious. It. Leave me alone. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're not supposed to drink the bottle. It's like literally a well, that's what they a say. Shot when, glass. When they say like, oh, you know, a glass of red wine. Well, uh, a lot of it, yeah, they it's do. It's good say. for antioxidants, and then it's like, yeah, but what's considered a glass is like that much, right? And if and you know, you might be a house husband, and drinking the entire bottle is not what the doctors were recommending. Yeah, they, it's like dark chocolate, right? Right, exactly. And they even have these joke glasses that hold a whole, a whole entire bottle, so yeah. you can say, "I only have one glass." I saw this thing. I think it might have been on Shark Tank, mm-hmm. where do you know like a like a rubber cork that you use after you yeah, undid yeah. the mm-hmm. cork, t- cork? Yeah, the stopper. Mm-hmm. It's like a stopper with a funnel in it, and so you plug it in, and then on top of it is a wine glass, and then like so, like the uh, the handle it has a special name, but it's hollow. So when you drink it, it's pouring from the bottle into this glass. So it's, don't all bottles pour into glass? It's imagine a stopper. Yes, and and connected to the stopper uh-huh. is then. So you no. never have to take the stopper out again. No, mm-hmm. it's like it's like a joke. It's like a gimmick. Uh, what's the gimmick? So okay, imagine a, a glass. Yes. A wine glass mm-hmm. has the base, has the thin handle out. So now we're gonna go backwards. Okay. That thin handle yes. goes to a stopper. Oh, the stem of the glass. Yeah, the stem goes of the glass, to a stopper, which, and it's all hollow. Okay. So you plug it into the glass. I get like it now. A stopper. I get and, it now. Yeah. Did it, did they get picked up? Um, I don't know. Okay. I don't even know if it's on Shark Tank. I don't know if I even if I saw it. Dream, 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 <laughs> dream, dream, dream. Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Oh, was that I? I thought you were dream, 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 dream. Now what is that? That's like from the 1950s. Ah, uh, well, how, well, how would I have known that? Because you know songs from the 1950s. I don't listen or watch anything before the 1996. You, you know lots and lots of songs from the 1950s. I think if it happened before my time, did it really happen at all? That's You don't know any Christmas songs? No. <laughs> I do, actually. I know Mariah Carey's. Oh, you um, don't know? Oh, like you don't know the classic ones of like... I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, you mean like <laughs> Justin Bieber's Under the Mistletoe? Yeah, Justin Bieber. Yeah, I know that classic. one. It's classic. Listen, he's Canadian. Any other days is National Caregiver Day. Give care today. Why? Well, hey, I think caregivers deserve a lot of credit. They really do. And um, again, I spoke of my friend uh, who lost her mother, um, and I'll speak of her again. My my very good friend Dana. She was her mother's primary caregiver. And jokes aside, it is very, uh, it is a very stressful job because it's not just it's not just loading the warehouse bins and picking parts because yep. it's such an emotional job. Yes. And um, they really do need um. They need their own care because of their giving physically and emotionally. Yeah. Caregivers. Well, today is for you. A lot of credit. Um, I'm sure it's some other days, but we're not going to talk about them because we have something more important to talk about. Mm-hmm. And that's what we do on Fridays nowadays. We have a little segment, a segment day, as they say in Spanish, called Dr. Seuss Friday. Right. Now, what do we do on Dr. Seuss Friday? Um, what do we do on Dr. Seuss Friday? Um, we, 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 we read a book written by Theodore, uh, Geisel. We do. Also, AKA Dr. Seuss, AKA TJ. Oh, right. Let's see. Siegel. Let's Le- 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 see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we read a Dr. Seuss book and you might be stopping us here and say, Spencer, Fidwick. What are you talking about? You read a Dr. Seuss book. That's child's play. And I say to you, yeah, it's child's play. Did you and mention Thidwick yet? You did. You said my name's Thidwick. Oh, I know. But they ne- we never told them that that was a Dr. Seuss reference. We're not going to until I oh. show the book. 
I would say, yes, it is child's play, and that's the whole point. You see, Jesus, he always said he loves children. And there was a reason, because their minds were open, their ears were hearing, their eyes were seeing. They were innocent, if you will. And Dr. Seuss had a beautiful way of storytelling to get big ideas into those those sponges that we call children. Mm Mm-hmm. And so as we grow and we harden into our calloused selves as adults, we forget about some of the most simple messages that will get us through life yeah. happily and healthily. And so we, on this special Friday, are going to go back as adults with our big brains, reread Dr. Seuss books, and get a bigger message. Yes. We're not kids anymore. And we're going to go back and show that Dr. Seuss was also not a kid. Yeah. And he knew most likely that the books were being read to the children. So I think he was trying to, he was trying to give us a nod. Like, big ideas through small little words. Yeah. For everyone. Actually pretty big words. He has a lot of like fuff a lump. He really does. Well, anyway, guys, without further ado, let's get into it. So today, as you stated already... No, well, my name today was Thidwick. Why was my name Thidwick? Your name was Thidwick because we're reading Thidwick, the Big Hearted Moose. You know how big moose are? Um, I've heard people talk about it, but I've never seen one. I've never even seen like a statue of one so I could get an idea. They're very big. Okay. I don't know how big, but I just remember every time I say that, I forget and then I look it up and I'm always re-surprised. So big. Of how big they are. Wow, that's amazing. And it's- they're pretty dangerous. It's uh, like a moose. What is he, like a deer or something? Uh, in the, probably in the family of, okay. of hooved, mm-hmm. you know, forest dwellers. Yeah. But um, yeah, real big, great swimmers, and they can climb trees. C- very Canadian. Yeah. But we have them? Yeah, probably in the center north. Well, I mean, you know, animals don't really see borders the same way yeah. we do. But I mean, they would never come south, I don't think. No, but I'm saying like, uh, could there be some? Up in Montana, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. But they're not stopped at customs. But no. The, <laughs> they probably would be if they went like straight through the customs line. Yeah. I don't think they would just like give them a nod and mm. let them pass. But I think it'd be more of an animal control situation and not a passport situation. It's probably um, harder for an elephant because he he he, tra- he travels with his trunk. <laughs> you got to check your trunk. <laughs> All right, guys, we're reading Thidwick and the Big Heart of Moose. I've never heard of this book. And you know what? So far, this is what, our fifth or sixth Dr. Seuss Friday? Yeah. I haven't heard of any of them. Yeah. And yeah, they've all been good. I've never heard of this one, but I'm so, uh, so I'm interested. <clears throat> Did he color on the color? Yes. Did he, he illustrate it? Okay. Written and illustrated by Dr. Okay. Seuss. <clears throat> Up at Lake Winneba- Winnebago. Isn't Lake Winnebago a national place? A Winnebago is a car, but. This is Winnebago. Up at Lake Winnebango, the far northern shore, lives a huge herd of moose, about 60 or more, and they all go around in a hap- in a big happy bunch looking for a nice tender moose moss to munch. Are they vegetarian? I don't know. These ones are. Up at Lake Winnebango, one day they were lunching, just strolling along and enjoying their munching. For the moose moss that day was especially fine, when it happened that Thidwick, the last moose in line, saw a bingle bug sitting. The bug called out, Hey, it's such a long road, and it's such a hot day. Would you mind if I rode on your horns for a way? Of course not, smiled Thidwick, the big-hearted moose. I'm happy my antlers can be of some use. There's room there to spare, and I'm happy to share. Be my guest, I hope you're comfortable there. So the bingle bug picked out a nice easy seat, and the moose went on looking for moose moss to eat. Well, an hour or so later, the bug heard a squeak, and he heard the small voice of a tree spider speak. I say, said the spider, you've got a fine place. That moose seems quite friendly. He's such a nice face. If I got on too, do you think he would mind? Hop aboard, laughed the bug, and I think that you'll find that the moose won't object. He's the big-hearted kind. I accept, said the spider, with joy and delight, and he started a web on the horn to the right. While the spider was spinning, he hurried a gay song, and a fresh little zin, a zoo bird, came along. He stopped and he stared, and he chirped well, well, well. 
What a smart place to build. What a great place to dwell. I've been living on trees ever since I was born. But here's something new. Why not live on a horn? If there's room there for two, then there's room there for three. There's plenty of room, left the bug, and it's free. Thidwick stopped walking. What was all the talking? What was all that talking? These guests had caught Thidwick the moose unawares. Hey, he called out. What's going on upstairs? Just building a nest, sir, the Zinazu said, and he began yanking hairs out of old poor Thidwick's head. And he plucked out exactly 204. Don't worry, he laughed. You can always grow more. Okay, well, <laughs> it's not very nice. Then he dozed off to sleep in his fine moose hair nest. <coughs> this bird murmured Thidwick. It's a so- is sort of a pest. This uh, what? <laughs> but I'm a good sport, so... This bird, murmured Thidwick, is sort of a pest. Oh, Sorry. okay, okay. Long emphasis. <laughs> but I'm a good sport, so I'll just let him rest. For a host above all must be nice to his guests. Hmm. Besides... Oh, that's a very sad photo. <laughs> Besides now, it's getting quite late in the day, and surely tomorrow they'll all go away. But alas, the next morning, the sun's early light brought to Thidwick's sad eyes a most unwelcome sight. Meet my wife, said the bird. I was married last night. And perhaps, by the way, I should mention to you that her uncle is coming to live with us, too. You're a very fine host, so I know you'd be willing. Then an uncle, a woodpecker, started in drilling. All Thidwick's friends shouted, get rid of those pests. I would, but I can't, sobbed poor Thidwick. They're guests. Guests indeed, his friends answered, and all of them frowned. If those are your guests, we don't want you around. You can't stay with us because you're not you're just not our sort. And they all turned their backs and walked off with a snort. Now the big friendless moose walked alone and forlorn with a great big woodpecker holes in his horns. With four great woodpecker holes in his horns. What holes, whispered Herman, a squirrel who spied him. What holes to hide nuts in? Hmm, mind if I tried them? They're yours, called the woodpecker. Get right inside them. This big-hearted moose runs a public hotel. Bring your nuts, bring your wife, bring your children as well. So the whole squirrel family all jumped on pell-mell, pell-mell. And the very next thing the poor animal knew, a bobcat and turtle were living there too. Now what was the the big-hearted moose going to do? Well, what would you do if this happened to you? You you couldn't say scat because that wouldn't be right. You couldn't shout scram because that isn't polite. A host has to put up with all kinds of pests, for a host above all must be nice to his guests. So you try hard to smile, and you try to look sweet, and you go right on looking for moose moss to eat. But now it was winter, and that wasn't easy, for moose moss gets scarce when the weather gets freezy. The food was soon gone on the cold northern shore of Lake Winnebango. There was just no more. And all of Thidwick's friends, Thidwick's friends, swam away in a bunch to the south of the lake where the moose moss, where there's moose moss to munch. He watched the herd leaving, and then Thidwick knew he'd starve. He'd starve if he stayed here. He'd have to go too. He stepped in the water. Then, oh, what a fuss! Stop! Screamed his guests. You can't do this to us. These horns are our home, and you have no right to take our home to the far distant side of the lake. Be fair, Thidwick begged with a lump in his throat. We're fair, said the bug. We will decide this by vote. All those in favor, go and say A. All those in favor of staying, say nay. A, shouted Thidwick, but when he was done, nay, they all yelled. He lost eleven to one. We win, screamed the guests by a very large score, and poor starving Thidwick climbed back to the shore. Then do you know what those pests did? They asked in some more. They asked in a fox who jumped in from the trees. They asked in some mice, and they asked in some fleas. They asked a big bear in, and then, if you please, came a swarm of 362 bees. Poor Thidwick sank sank down with a groan to his knees, and then, then came something that made his heart freeze. Bullets came zinging right past Thidwick's face. Guns were bing-banging all over the place. Get that moose, get that moose, Thidwick heard a voice call. Fire again and again and and shoot straight one and all. We must get his head for the Harvard Club wall. 
Fidwick took to his heels with that load on his head. With 500 pounds on his horns, the moose fled. He could have run faster without all those pests, but a host above all must be nice to his guests. Up canyon, off cliff, off wild rocky trail, with bullets bang bouncing around him like hail. Up gully, through gulch, and down slippery sluice, with his hard-hearted guests, raced the soft-hearted moose. They f- then finally they had him, because of those poor pests he had run out of luck. Because of the guests on his horns, he was stuck. He gasped, he fell faint, the whole world grew fuzzy. Thidwick, Thidwick was finished, completely, and he was shot dead. <gasps> no. <laughs> or was he? Uh, it says that? No. Oh, it rhymed. That's why I believed you. Finished, not Thidwick, definitely not. It's true, he was in the most terrible spot, but now he remembered a thing he'd forgot. A wonderful something that happens each year. To the horns of all moose and the horns of all deer. Today was a day Thidwick happened to know. That old horns came off so that new ones can grow. And he called to the pests on his horns as he threw them. You wanted my horns, now you're quite welcome to them. Keep them, they're yours, as for me I shall take myself to the far distant side of the lake. And he swam Winnebago and found his old bunch and arrived just in time for a wonderful lunch. At the south of the lake where there's moose moss to munch. His old horns today are where you knew they would be. His guests are still on them, all stuffed as they should be. I am so shocked at this book. <laughs> the end. I'm so shocked at this book. You don't like it? I like it. Uh, okay, so my recap is they they used him. They took advantage of his generosity and um and they almost got him killed and then he he i thought he, they weren't really his friends right like they, no. right and then and then the, and then they were hunted and stuffed at the end and and uh, <laughs> it just is that cannot be for a child well that's why we're reading it today on crow can crow i don't even know what to think of it you don't know what to think of it i do starting i thought it meant be, be the kind. generous, not yeah, but, but it looks like he's taken advantage of, and that's what we're talking about today. Okay, and that's what I'm getting from this book. As Christians, yeah, now it's time to get spiritual. As Christians, we all know we're meant to do good, yeah. and we're and we're meant to help and be the one with open arms. Yeah, but hospitable, hospitable. You know, these are our guests. Open door policy, but you need to be wary of your generosity being taken advantage of mm. and and that's what this that's what all, all this entire book is about right is being taken advantage of for being the biggest hearted moose right and so like it's it, it's tough because then it's like well where do you draw the line like should he have not even let the first person on right and it's like it's i think like um we talked a little bit about it in the mirror podcast on wednesday where it's like you need to love the person in the mirror just like your neighbor. Right. And so I kind of like, like we kind of talked about in, with the mirror idea of how should you love, like uh, love yourself like your neighbor. You should love all your neighbors, but you should be able to look in the mirror and treat that person like a neighbor. You know, if you know yeah, what I mean? Like, right. And like the, the, one of the downfalls that I feel like sometimes Christians fall into is they love their neighbor, but they're not taking care of that neighbor, that person in the mirror. True, and and I find that so um, prevalent that people will will work harder or fight harder for uh, for others than yes. for themselves. Yeah, and, and so that is the one thing that Thidwick, you know, like was he big hearted? Yes, but almost to a fault because right he didn't care about the the moose in the mirror, if you will. Yes, and it's like would if he's it, like being so big hearted. If he saw another moose struggling, can't even walk, can't even eat, he'd want to help them just as much, right? Like right. We we have we saw nothing but selflessness. Yes. Through Thidwick, yet he wasn't like uh, taking himself into account the same way he was taking all the pests. And then, then as from the pest side, of, like of, uh, of it, it wasn't a appreciation for generosity. It wasn't can you help me out? It was a full taken advantage of and an entitlement to his kindness right and so i think 
it's also a story of like in the end you have like the shedding and and it's the yeah it was really very nice and hopeful that you know when you thought just when you thought he was finished yeah there was always hope and there's always hope and at, for us like even if you don't look at it as like helping people yeah but just imagine if there's people or things in your life that are weighing you down you always have the ability to shed that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and like don't let other people you know drown you if you will yes like don't let other people because they were fully like content with well you're going we're, we're going down like you're going down and you need to be able to rid yourself of the negativity in your yes. life and, and the people that are taking advantage in your life so that you can like if we lost good old Thidwick because in a way his old I see him as the best moose of the bunch right Right, the other moose were like, "Ah, we're not even going to try to be yeah. too nice." But therefore, we don't want to lose Thidwick. Right. And it's like, so you want him to shed all of the people taking advantage of him and the negativity, so that he can go and still be the big-hearted moose right. that he can be. Without, you know, it's like what I uh, another analogy I use is a cup analogy of water. Yeah. And it's like, if you're you want your cup to be overflowing, and you know Thidwick's was. But when you're pouring it in so many other cups, you end up with an empty cup. Like right. you want to be, you don't ever want to hold on to your kindness, hold on to that water in that cup. Right. But at the same time, it's like you don't want to completely drain yourself. No. Because what use is that? Right. And then we we don't we have one less big hearted moose. And 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 interesting that it, it, he was such he was such. I mean, you you said how big a moose was. And you had fleas and bees and and little bugs taking advantage of him. So it doesn't matter how big you are, whether in um, physical statue stature or, uh, you know, uh, it, it, just a place in society. Yeah. You know, you can be taken advantage of no matter how, um, where you are in that. Also, I found sorry. No, one fine. more thing was just that the crowd mentality. So yeah. The first people who were taking advantage of him, but it seems like the more people who came along were like, "Well, yeah. all these people are here," and maybe and, and and speaking for him, where they were like, "Yeah, oh, he doesn't mind; it's free, right?" So you should always be self um, responsible, even if you see everybody else doing something. Like it doesn't matter; should you be doing? Yeah, it? Mm-hmm. you shouldn't be pressured or gaslit. He was being gaslit, is what he was. He but, was. So I think you know, just to you know, finish it up, kind of. It's because it's like still the question is, oh, but shouldn't you like do things for people? I think being, you know, Christian and charitable and big hearted doesn't mean you have to be weak. Right. And it's like you can we have we had an entire podcast on this and it was the boundaries podcast. And you're like, well, what are my boundaries? And we talked all about should a Christian have fences up and it's like, should they should there be boundaries? And you, you can be strong and still be giving like uh you can still be ready to help anyone without being a doormat and so it's about giving and being big-hearted and always being selfless but to be but be strong in it and that that circles all back around to loving yourself just as much as you love your neighbor right i love you and i love myself and so i want both of us to succeed have health and wealth I don't want you taking all my money to have wealth. I don't want you taking, you know, draining me to have health. Right. I want us, but I want to help you and have us both be as good of people as we can be. Mm. And then if you're, if not, if I see that you want my wealth, you don't want me to help you get wealth. Yeah. Then you're taking advantage and then that's just, you're, you're, you're draining me and I need to shed you right. and you, and I need to move on so that I am not, you know, I, I don't. Go meet you at your level. I rise above it, and so I can help others who are willing to be helped. Yeah, and be careful where you hang your hat. You want it. You don't want to be on a pair of horn um, antlers that might be tossed away in the in. You know, that's a Bible story of building your um building on solid ground, a good yeah. foundation. You don't want you don't want the sand to shift or the the you know. So yeah. these well, people made bad choice. The his friend his friends made bad choices. His furry friends who were living on top of something that wasn't theirs and it wasn't, you yeah. know, it was never yeah. going to last. No, you, you, you definitely like you. A lot of times we find ourselves in the pest shoes as well, where it's like, 
yeah. doesn't feel like as much, but it's like, oh, this is working out for me. Yeah. And it's like, oh, like, look, you don't even I'm, want to I'm see being, the truth. I'm right. being provided for it and stuff. And it's like, you don't, you don't know if, if you're draining someone when it's like, all right, you have to, and you're constantly asking yourself, like, what am I providing to this relationship? Right. right? What am I providing to this? Yes. And it's, it's all about that balance. So you could be any character in the book. You can be any character in the book. But it's a good book. It's a thought-provoking it one, really isn't is. it? Thought. We were looking for th words yesterday. We were, and we just got one. Thidwick. <laughs> Not on Thursday, but on a Friday. Well, let us know what you think. Let us know if you ever heard about Thidwick before. Leave it down in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and share. Why not? Doctor Seuss Friday. Fair. We'll be back on an early podcast next week. It'll be a Tuesday because yeah. it's two, 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 two. It'll literally so it'll literally be two. It'll be February twenty second, the year two twenty two twenty two on a Tuesday. Right. So, so we're gonna have an early podcast. It's gonna be on Tuesday, <laughs> shortest weekend you'll ever have to wait before seeing us again. It's been real and it's been fun, but it has not been real fun. Peace.